This month's mini goes out to the Math Counts team of Desert Ridge. They're making me happy with this special glow-in-the-dark t-shirt. Now let's get started. We're working with an ordinary magic square. In an ordinary magic square, we fill each of the cells with the numbers 1 through 9, using each number exactly once, such that each row, each column, and each diagonal adds up to the same number. Now, in this magic square, we're told that the middle number is 5, and the number down here is one more than the number up here. And we have to find the sum of all possible values of x, such that when we put in that value of x, we're still able to fill out this magic square according to all these rules. Now, right away, we see that x is one of those numbers we put in one of these cells. So x has to be a number from 1 to 9. Let's go ahead and write all those numbers down. And right away, we see that we can't use just any one of these numbers because we can't use 5. If we put 5 in there, we'll have two 5s in the grid, and that's no good. We have to use each number from 1 to 9 exactly once. So x can't be 5. We look down at this x plus 1, and we see that x plus 1 can't equal 5 either, so x can't be 4. But what about 1? If I put 1 in there, I'll have a 1 there, 5 there, and a 2 there. I won't have any number twice, at least not yet, so maybe 1 works. Maybe 2 works, I'll have a 2, a 5, and a 3. Nothing wrong with that, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to try putting each one in here and solve the whole square, because solve the square over and over again, that'll take forever. Uh, hmm. 6, maybe that works, 7, 8. Wait a second, 9, if I put 9 down here, 9 plus 1 is 10, I'll have a 10 in one of these cells, and that's no good. Each of these cells has to have a number from 1 to 9, so x can't be 9. What about the rest of these? Hmm, I feel stuck. Now, when I'm really stuck on a problem, I like to look back at the problem, look for something I haven't used yet. I look back and I see this right there. That thing where the rows, the columns, the diagonals all have to have the same sum. We haven't used that yet. But what is that sum? I don't know. I don't know what the sum of each row is. But I do know what the sum of all the numbers in the whole magic square is. That's just the sum of the numbers from 1 to 9. You have 1 and 9, you get 10. 2 and 8 gives us 10 more. That's 20. 7 and 3 gives us 30. 6 and 4 gives us 40. And we add in that last 5. We got 45 for the whole grid. That means each of these rows has to add up to 15. Each of the columns adds up to 15. Each of the diagonals. We just take that whole 45, divide it by 3 for the three rows. All right, but how do we use that? I look at this column right here. I've got an X there. I've got a 5 there. I have to put something in here to make all of this add up to 15. That means this number down here is 10 minus X, whatever X is. And that tells us... I don't know what that tells us. Let's keep going. Let's, let's go along this row down here. I have a 10 minus x there, and x plus 1 there. I add those up, I get 11. That tells me this last number has to be 4, because these all have to add up to 15. And that tells me something right away. x can't be 3. Because if I put 3 in here, 3 plus 1 is 4. I'll have two 4s. That's no good. So x can't be 3. And it can't be 6 either. I put 6 in here. 10 minus 6 is 4. I'll have two 4s. So 6 can't use that. What about the others? That's 1, that 10 minus 1 is 9, that'll be a 2, still seems okay. 2 seems okay, huh. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Fill out more of the grid. 4 and 5, this diagonal has to add up to 15. 4 and 5 is 9, I need 6 more right there. Doesn't tell me a whole lot right away. Let's go this way. I've got a 6, I've got an x. This is 9 minus x. Still don't see any problems. Let's keep going. Come down this way, 9 minus x and 14. Put those together. You have 13 minus x, so this is going to be 2 plus x. And then going this way, you've got 7 plus x total right there. That means this has to be 8 minus x. Quick check. This adds up to 15. This adds up to 15. Looks okay. But does this eliminate any more possibilities? I have this 2 plus x and this 8 minus x there. If I put an 8 in there, ah, oh, we have a problem. 2 plus 8 is 10. This, this is no good. And 2 plus 2 
gives us 4. That's no good either, so x can't be 2. What about 1 or 7? Hmm. Don't see anything immediately wrong here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm down to just two numbers, and I filled out the whole grid here. I'm just going to take this x equals 1, put it in each one of these, and see if our magic square is OK. Put it in here. We get 8 there, 1 here, 6 there, 3, 5, and 7, 4, 9, and 2. We've used each number from 1 up to 9. That seems fine. All the columns add to 15. So do the rows. So do the diagonals. Let's check 7. We know 1 works. We check 7. Put 7 in here. We'll get 2. 7 there. 6 over here. 9, 5, and 1. 4, 3, then 8. And once again, we've used each number from 1 to 9. Rows are fine, columns are fine, diagonals are fine. 7 is OK as well. And we're looking for the sum of all possible values of x. 1 plus 7 is 8. And we're ready for the next problem. The three-digit numbers C99, A6A, BC7, and B91. They form an arithmetic sequence in this order. We have to find the value of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Ah, it's a lot like that last problem. There's no fancy formula that just solves this right away. We're going to have to jump in and mess around, see what we can figure out. Now, we have an arithmetic sequence here, but we don't know if that thing's going up or it's going down. So what can we figure out here? Well, going from this first number to this second number, we're going from c to a in the hundreds digit. That doesn't tell me anything. We go from 9 to 6 in a tens digit. Well, if we're going down, well, maybe we're going down by 30 something or 130 something. Or uh, if we're going up, well, maybe we're going up by like 60 something because we're going to carry from that 9 probably. Maybe 160 something. Uh, that's not helping me. I keep moving on. Compare this one to this one. I don't know. No places there with digits, both numbers, numbers that we already know. But over here, we know the units digit in both of these, just like we knew the tens digit in both of these. So let's focus on these two. Now, if I'm going up from this one to this one, I have a number that ends in 7. And if I'm adding something to get to a number that ends in 1, I need to be adding something that ends in 4. All right. Now, if I'm adding going up, I'm adding something with a unit's digit of 4 each time. To go from here to here, I needed to start with a unit's digit of 3. It would tell me that a is 3. But maybe I'm not adding. We don't know if the sequence is going up or down. What if we were subtracting? If we were subtracting going down from here to here, I'd be subtracting something with a unit's digit of 6. So where will we have to be here to subtract something with a unit's digit of 6 to get a unit's digit of 7? That would again mean that this must have a unit's digit of 3. So whether we're going up or down, the unit's digit of this number has to be 3. We know what a is. That's awesome. We can go ahead and write that down. We've got a. a is 3, so that's going to be 3 squared plus whatever b squared is and whatever c squared is. Now let's go ahead and write this down. c99, put in our 3, 363. B, C, 7, and B, 9, 1. So we have A, still don't know B, still don't know C. We still don't even know if we're going up or down. But looking at these last two, whether we're going up or we're going down, we're not moving by more than 100, because these have the same hundreds digits. So we're either adding some number that's less than 100 or subtracting some number that's less than 100 each step. But I still don't know what number that is is. Well, hmm. If we're going down at each step, you compare these two, they have the same hundreds digit. That means, well, the only thing C could possibly be is 9. That's the only way this number could end up being larger than this. But if C is 9, I'm going from 999 down to 363. You're going down way more than 100, and that's no good because you can't go down way more than 100 to get from here to here. So, can't possibly be going down. We have to be going up. And we're going up by something that's less than 100. 
So now we know what C is. We know that C is not going to be the same thing as A. I can't put a 3 in there, right? We're going up, and we need to be going up by less than 100. So C can't be 1. So C has to be 2. And we're going up by 64 at each step. We add 64 on here, we get 427. We add 64 onto that, we get 491. And now we know that C is 2 and B is 4. So our A squared plus B squared plus C squared is 9. Plus 16 gives us 25. Add on another 4. And we have 29.